The Influencer's Edge is brought to you by the Rapid Sales Accelerator. If you're ready to skyrocket your sales by 30% or more in just 90 days, then you need to claim your free training right now. You'll learn four words that will compel your prospects to trust you like they were children within the first three to five minutes of any conversation across any platform and any medium. You'll learn how to give your prospects objection amnesia to crush objections like I need to talk to my spouse or I need more time to think it over or it's too expensive. And finally, you'll get a free recorded audio training that will install unbelievable attitudes for success and wipe out any limiting beliefs. So if you'd like to claim your free training now, go to www.paulrossbook.com. Do it before your competition does it now. Welcome to the Influencer's Edge. This is the place where you come to get the latest breakthroughs, cutting edge insights, tools, and techniques to leapfrog over the pack in sales, persuasion, and influence. Be sure you visit our website at www.theinfluencersedge.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back. Tune in and enjoy today's episode. All right, welcome back to the Influencer's Edge. I was having a very interesting conversation with my guest, first of all, to pronounce his last name. So Chip, I think I got it. Chip Eichelberger. Did I get Eichelberger, it right? pretty easy. All right. So uh, let me just go through a little bit of your biography and but transparently the reason i wanted to have you on the show is you talk about a subject that is ignored pretty much ignored by salespeople, entrepreneurs business owners who are so busy which is maintaining their health it's yeah. so stressful to do a business i won't get into my own health challenges but uh so let me just dive right into it so you are chip is the former tony robbins international point man for uh, let me just pause right there. So you worked with what I call Mr. Glitter Teeth. Uh, the guy's a giant, right? How tall is Tony? 6'10"? No, he's 6'7", but he's about 280. But he had, uh, I mean, coming out of high school, he was really only about 5'11". Then he had a form of giantism. Yeah, agromagnet. 6'7". So pictures of me and Tony, it's like I'm 6'3", 200, but he looks, you know, like a giant. <laughs> agromagnet. I don't want to make this about Tony. I want to make it about you. Okay. Uh, so 33 years and over 1,000 companies have chosen Chip to create a unique opening and or closing experience at their conventions. Just minor, tiny little brands. I think, audience, you may not recognize these. Little pissant company called Apple. Uh, you know, I'd loan those schmucks $1,000 and they never paid me back. What's his name? I don't even want to mention their names. What was the ad? Wozniak and Jobs, they won't take, <laughs> well, Jobs is dead, but Wozniak and Woz won't take my calls. Oh, my Mitch God. It's Mutual, GM, Boston Scientific, L'Oreal. That's a broad range of companies to, across a span. I, I purposely it's, never niched. My message, I can apply it. If you're breathing, I can apply my message to the theme of that meeting, the business model. And let's just, talk about that. Let's yeah. talk about that right away. Everyone says, all the gurus say, the riches are in the niches. However, yeah. Yeah. the most successful people I know don't niche. Uh, my niece, Vanessa Van Edwards, I don't know if you've heard of Vanessa or not, but Vanessa has made a fortune. She doesn't niche, uh, niche, niche, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's talk about how, how did you make that decision to fly in the face of all that advice? Oh boy. Early on, I, I just, my whole thing has been about what I used to promote Tony Robbins. I've used in my career. Cause I mean, I did 1300 presentations all over from Australia, UK to promote Tony. And my whole goal was to engage people to say, Hey, that seminar sounds worthy. I want to invest my money right now. So I had to be very persuasive. If I got people involved, I always did kind of a customized handout where people writing things down. I'm about the only quote keynote speaker who does that now. It's, it's, very easy to show up with the same slide deck, the same talk, speed, push play and go. I always say, okay, what's the business model? What's the theme? How much time do I have? 
what do I want to persuade these people to do based on my contacts with the client? And so I customize my material. And if I get people writing things down, if I get them standing up, sharing, engaging, making decisions, it's sticky and and, and lasts. So I purposely never niched. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, God love them. People who just talk to financial services or real estate or auto, I'd shoot myself. I just got done speaking to L'Oreal, number one <laughs> brand in the world. I called it, you know, I talked to their derma team that calls on dermatologists. And then I talked to the big box, you know, that sells to the big box stores. And I just got done with the largest hot tub manufacturer, Caldera Spas. I just did got they give you a free one? <laughs> uh, no, they did not. But after you go there, you're like, I, I, I'd love to get one. But it's it's more fun to learn about different people, Agreed. different business models and apply. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. You used the term. See, I listen and I told you we won't go through your biography all the way. I'll pull things out of the bio. This is my style. There you my go. This is used to it by now. You use the term sticky. Yeah. So I'm not going to let you get away with that. Explain what you mean by sticky and why is it important? Well, that, that's where I've really repositioned myself this last 18 months, Paul. Um, I've been, I'm 63. I've done a thousand of these. I love it. I could never imagine retiring as long as people want to see me, I'm going to go. I'm all about what are people going to do? So is the message sticky? Do people ponder it? Like I always have people uh, make a decision after, you know, at the event. And I have a little special card and it says my decision. What am I going to start doing? stop doing, commit to, why, I have them date it, then I have them go to their cell phone, for example, pull out their phone, go one week from today, put a little reminder of that decision in their calendar, and then click repeat daily or week, repeat weekly. That's sticky. That's get people to think about it. When I get people writing things down and engaging, I just, a speech doesn't move it. Uh, you know, I agree so much. We're hiring people to come in and do a speech, and people are sitting here like this, um, I, I think they want an experience. You know, it's one of the things I learned from Tony. Uh, people would rather be entertained than educated. Uh, you've got to have fun. you got to be entertaining. But, you know, I, I try to be in your face with love. I get people to confront the brutal facts, the current pause, situation. Pause, 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 pause. This is, look, we're just going to do off the answers you give me. All right. My observation about you is you're as much an investigator and an entertainer as you are a salesperson. You do a lot of investigating. Oh, you got it. Well, the number one thing that I strive to do, because I know a lot of these people have, you know, I, I just spoke at an event for a big medical company. A lot of people have been with Boston Scientific, et cetera. And the guy comes up at the end, he goes, have, have you ever spoken with Bayer? I said, no, you know somebody there, I'd love it. He goes, we had people come in there all the time, but never anything like this. You know, that's the reaction I'm going for. You got to get buy-in from the people quickly know in your presentation, okay, this person did their homework. They understand who we are, business model terms, frustrations, et cetera. That gets people engaged and interested if you I, do your homework. I couldn't agree more. Buy-in is so important. And most people, that's why uh, when I present, I don't want to make it about me. I don't use slide decks. I just don't. I think they're horrible. It sets automatically the thing in people's mind that yawn, yawn, yawn. Well, I'm going to push back on you. I went 20 years without ever using it too. And if done properly, okay. most people don't know how to use it. I'll use a big picture and six words, for example. Or it's this, oh. it's 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 because the visual aspect is good. But too many people are putting, I mean, if I could do your presentation with your slide deck, you're, you suck. You should not be doing presentations if you're sitting there reading all this stuff. So right. if done properly, it can help. But yeah, I, I will agree. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I love it. See, we're not even through. We're two sentences through the biography. And I told you uh, that that we would get into this. How did you get that? So you learned this orientation from working with Tony or you always had this idea? No, I, I had never really spoken in public. I'd been with a clothing company called Janssen Sportswear and, you know, that was very little showing the line to two or three people, the clothing line. Then I started with Tony. It was a hundred percent commission per position. And I started in 88, right before the infomercial hit. If people remember that first infomercial with Fran Tarkington and I would be out yes. there, I'd have a team of six people. We'd go out there yeah. and get to a city six, eight weeks in advance. And we did, you know, I, again, I did 1300 plus presentations. I was number one salesperson every year I was on the road, went ahead of them to Australia to lead the team there, went ahead of them to uh, UK to kind of set the stage there. 
And uh, it was great. I mean, I did that before I ever got on stage for one paid engagement. So my skill level before I got into this was a little sharper than most people, I would say. And it's all around not presenting information. It's constructing a, a framework almost from a Socrates angle of questioning and logical presentation to get people to realize, hey, I need to make some decisions and change. And persuading them to make a decision right there, not go home and think about it. Let's take care of it right now. Let's talk about that because this, remember my audience are entrepreneurs, salespeople, people are looking for the cutting edge. So let's yeah. talk about that, getting them to make a decision right then and there, because people I found, uh, I would really like you to speak into this. Yeah. I found nowadays that it's not enough to get people to know, like, and trust you. They often don't trust their own ability to make a good decision. Is that, is that making sense to you? or, well, it's, or? It's, it's a skill. I mean, a lot of people are very wishy-washy decision makers. You know, it's they just don't have the ability to... I, I think we complicate change. One of my favorite pieces is, you know, I talk about the power of one in a row. When you, when you want to change something, usually there's a a leverage moment where it goes from, I should change this to, I must change this. You know, I love what Jim Rohn used to say. Every, hopefully people know Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. If you don't know that name, pull him up. He was, Tony was with him for many years. He passed away, I think 12 years ago now. For my money, he's the best ever. And Jim used to say, disgust is a powerful motivator. I mean, I've been talking a lot about wellness, for example. And, you know, if you work out at a health club, it might have been really busy in January. You're looking around saying, where in the hell did all these people come from? Yes. Because what happened is early January, they woke up one day, got out of the shower naked, looked at the mirror and went, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I got I to go do something. You know, it, it, sometimes it takes that. <laughs> I've got to do something right now. You know, so that, that's that's what happens. What I try to do, though, is, you know, I, I work out at Planet Fitness, for example, and I think they're really not serving their members because Planet Fitness is based on the no judgment zone. That's their whole marketing. Right. Right. But people need judgment. They need to say, hey, Paul, you joined. Fantastic. Well, pause, 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 okay. pause, pause. You're dropping diamonds. Let's, let's, so disgust is a powerful motivator. I've yes. never heard that before. Okay. And then what was the second thing you said about people need judgment? This is contrary to anything. This is why I love you, man. You're, you're fantastic because we want contrarians. Disgust yeah. is a powerful motivator. And uh, oh, just a little piece on Planet Fitness. They're all around no judgment, but you need to judge and say, hey, you know, let's say you're a new member. Come in. Hey, Paul, why did you join? What what, what would you like to achieve? How often are you going to work out? What do you weigh now? What do you want to you know weigh afterwards? Let's talk about what you're putting into your mouth because it's 80 percent what you put into your mouth. I agree. And they don't. So what happens is people go into the gym. There's no judgment. So nobody gets any training and they walk around and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to elevate their heart level to help cure their heart disease, for example. They don't know how to use the machines or set the seed or set up a pattern. And they wander around and they don't get any results and they quit. So sometimes judgment is good to help coach people to get their results. You know, we're, we're this. we've really stopped helping hold people accountable. We're trying to validate now obesity. That's okay. That's your choice. Obesity, Not you want to be fat. That's beautiful. Well, hey, come on. Right now in America, uh, National Council on Aging says 68% of people have one chronic disease at age 65. Right. Uh, no, excuse me. 80% have one. 68% have two or more. So if you get to age 65 and you got COPD, type 2 diabetes, and hypertension, how long are you going to live? What is the quality of your life going to be? The rest of your life is freaking doctor's appointments and drugs. And I try to get in people's face and say, if you're not taking care of yourself now, so I don't, I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time to work out and eat better. Well, you don't have time not to work out and eat better because how are you going to handle a severe illness? Where are you going to get the time to suddenly work with that? You're preaching to the choir here. I spend 10 K a year on my naturopaths bringing under bear, doing all sorts of stuff to keep me healthy. And well, we'll have to have a conversation online. I'd like to hear more about that. I'm always open to new ideas. Yeah. Well, I'll mention one real quickly and then we'll get on with the interview. Yeah. Methylene blue. Look into okay. methylene blue. We'll talk about it offline. All right. Sure. So I told you we went too much with your biography, but let's let's dive in. <laughs> um, so many in their pursuit for achievement focus on what 
to do, not who they want to become. This is brilliant right here and now, because I believe first you have to change your identity before everything flows from identity. So let's talk about that concept. Well, about right. Well, no, no, no behavior is going to change, I think, until your belief changes. You know, you get a simple example. People say, uh, because I was getting back to the power of one in a row, because when you want to change and you get that yeah. moment of disgust, you say, I'm going to start working out. Well, a streak starts with one. It's the first right action. And then that next right action leads to the next right action. So it's um, getting clear on what you want and how you want to achieve it. But most people aren't willing to do the hard work. You know, we live in a, a pill society where people want to pop a pill. Oh, my stomach's bad. I'll take a pill. Well, you might be eating shit. You might not be doing that. Oh, I'm not sleeping well. Maybe you're on your phone to the last minute. Maybe you need to take a hot shower, some green tea and get off the damn phone. Uh, you know, it's I, cortisol. On the here. One of the, what, you, what you said something brilliant though. I want to go back to what you said. Go to it. I'm on a message. No, you you're on message and you're delivering stuff. You said a. Did you say a streak? A streak. Any long term streak starts with one. You can't get to a hundred days in a row until you do the first one. It's the power of one in a row, right? But I'm just a big yeah. believer in writing it down and tracking it. So how do you deal with inertia? I read a book called One Thing, where the person says develop one habit at a time. And the whole thing is it takes 21 days to develop a habit. I'll I push that's back. That's cool. all bullshit. There's I think no, it's bullshit, too. Yeah, there's I no study to say a bell rings at 21 days. We're all different. It I depends on too. the quality of your decision in that moment of disgust. How much why do you have to live that change? I agree. I'm put, I, I'm just saying that's what people say i think it's utter oh, yeah. well it's because everybody's repeated that and people believe it we're all different but if you know like let's say for example um i've helped a lot of people confront quit chewing tobacco or smoking right and for example most of the people i know who quit and i remember my biggest client the last few years has been lenore holmes and i had 39 divisions and two of their division presidents during my presentations about this took the chew out of their pocket walked over to the garbage can and threw it out they never touched it again. They started a streak of one day in a row, I'm gonna have a clean mouth, next day clean mouth, right? Or I'm gonna be a clean air breather, I'm gonna quit. Most people who quit smoking didn't do the patch, they freaking quit. I love this so much. There's a very, I, I'm a hypnotist, been doing it for 30 years. There, wow. was, there was a hypnotist, the last name was Siegel. And he never said cigarettes are disgusting or any of that. The suggestion he gave is, I am a per I need my lungs to live. I respect my lungs. Yeah. I am a person who respects my lungs. And he made it their identity, not about a response. Smoking, I, I hate cigarettes. It's, I am someone who respects his lungs. Right. I'm going to start breathing clean air. I'm going to start breathing clean air. Because it's... For some, it depends on how people are wired. For some people, it's better to start doing something instead of stop smoking. I'm going to start respecting my yes. lungs. Start yes. Start clean air. Yes. Just, it depends on if you're more motivated by the pain of lung cancer and dying or the pleasure of being alive, bringing clean air to walk your child down the aisle one day, you know? I think this is beautiful. And, you know, I want to go back to what you said. A streak starts with one. I dropped 15 pounds of fat off my belly and I did it. Number one, I had my trainer cook the right food. So I wasn't tempted. I'm still yeah. not, I'm tempted a little, but I recognize that that journey started with, I, it's one right decision at a time, one right decision at a time, not, a, 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 not visualizing myself skinny or the rest of it, but one right decision at a time, every time. And so I, I, I always tell people, don't underestimate the power of one decision, because one right decision, you get yourself to do that, you start that streak, that new discipline, little muscle, a little bit bigger, you can now make another decision at a new discipline. And from what I've studied too, you can get a lot of bang for the buck by starting one new discipline and starting one new good habit. But also you got, I talk about what do you need to stop doing? There could be one bad habit you have that is really diabolical and infecting every part of your life. For example, for some people, I mean, 
people addicted to pornography is crazy. And I always mention, you know, what do you need to start doing, stop doing? Is there a website? You need to say, that's it. Is there an app? You need to get off your homepage. Is there an app? You need to delete TikTok, for example. What's, I what's did it. I Good? deleted I did TikTok. Yeah. I, did, I had it on for like two months when COVID first started. And I thought, this is a major time suck. I'm done. I was making money on TikTok. But the wow. problem was, I had to, uh, it got me addicted to scrolling on everyone's account. So I thought, nope, this is damaging my mental health and my ability to focus Terrible. far more than it's making me money. Uh, my coach said, don't delete it. I said, sorry, my health is the most important thing. Yeah, I deleted the damn thing. Let's talk. So you're so much on the issue of, of transforming who people are through their health. And, and what you've said is so true about chronic disease. I look around me uh, here. I'm sure it's not just San Diego. It's all over the United States. I see people obese. I see people stuffing their face with with fast food let's talk about that you just grabbed something but when yeah i'll show i'm going to show you that before we go it's a new thing i'm doing but um we we have a disease care system we don't have a preventative health care system right I'll give you an example i just won't name the company but i just got done with the company is an oncology field treating cancer primarily liver cancer kind yes. of a more minimally invasive way to do it my mother died from liver cancer so okay helping out. so with oncologists, God love them, 70% um, plus of their income comes from chemo. Yes, big biz. Surgeons, you go to a surgeon, they're going to recommend probably cutting in surgery. Right. But the challenge is, is that I was talking to a woman who was a doctor, um, and they were she was an oncologist, and they were going to have her in to talk to the team afterwards. And I said, let me ask you, because a lot of the people that come in who have cancer diagnosis are not in good shape. Is that true? She goes, yeah, there are a lot of them in really terrible shape. And I go, what, what do you do to help them counsel them on diet and exercise and cleaning their environment, and giving their body a chance to heal? You know what she said? Nothing. I, I don't get into that. Yeah. I did a program 12 years ago for Eli Lilly. Great company. Created the first insulin to help type 1 diabetics, as people may know two types of diabetes, type one and type two. There are right now in America, 97% of diabetics are type two diabetes. It's 100% of lifestyle disease you give to yourself by I bad know. diet, bad choices, bad exercise, et cetera. And right now in America, one in nine are type two diabetics and almost one half of the population are pre-diabetic and don't even know it. Right. Short story, I'm doing a program for Eli Lilly, bring me in to talk to a bunch of pedi pediatricians. So pediatricians are treating children who are so fat now, so young, they're becoming type 2 diabetics. I've so, seen it. It's child abuse. But nothing pisses me off more than seeing overweight children of overweight parents. They're dooming it's, those children to a lifetime of disease. I agree. Drug. But here's the punchline, Paul. So I, I, I always talk about the vision, but you got to confront the brutal facts of current situation. Most people know that's from the Stockdale Paradox, Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. But you have to confront the brutal facts. I said, how many of your patients, these children know, and they're sitting down with the parents, this wasn't an accident. Your child got type 2 diabetes. Your lifestyle has got to change. We've got to do X, Y, Z. You can reverse it. Don't accept it. You can reverse it. We're going to put you on a plan. We're going to track it, measure it, coach you enthusiastically, um, help you reverse this disease state. I said, how many of your young patients go out of the office with that? And they go, Zero, because it's so much easier to throw somebody on a pill. A pill. You might have seen the new, uh, there's a new Tucker Carlson did a great interview with the guy on Ozempic. Have you seen that? I, you know what? This is such a huge, huge danger. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm not quite, but Oz, what Ozempic is doing, even if it works, it's reinforcing the quick Fits, I'm not responsible mentality. There's there side effects with liver. And, you know, the guy had a great, you know, analogy. He goes, obesity is not a deficiency of Ozempic in your system, right? <laughs> See, that's my problem with most people. If people want to Google the a Newsweek cover last September, came up with a study for 90 plus percent of people, um, uh, SSRIs, antidepressants are no better, better than a placebo. Right. And the withdrawal from those SSRIs is very, very bad. But the yes. challenge is for me, it's like if you're depressed, the doctor doesn't have a lot of quality time to talk you off the edge. No. It's so much easier to write a script. No. And then you think, I'm taking magic pill. I don't have to look at my diet, 
exercise, what I read, what I watch, all those patterns that are likely causing this feeling, because we all have those moments of, quote, depression. But it's a skill to be able to wire your brain for happiness. And Tony used to say, the quality of your life is the quality of your questions. Questions. Yeah. So how can you train yourself to ask the right questions? And I'm a big believer, motion is medicine. Sitting is killing people. They live a sedentary right. lifestyle. Movement is crucial. So we we just have, and I've got a book over here. I'll grab it. I'll show Go you. Go grab it. It's I a, work out with my trainer five times a week, strength train. I'm on the treadmill five times, six times a week. Take one day off. Yeah, brilliant. Th this book right here was Think, written in 1918 by a guy named Colonel Hunter. If anybody wants it, I'll send you the PDF for free. My email is chip at getswitchedon.com. Just say I want Think. For example, doctors are giving less medicine and doing more in the ways of suggesting diet and exercise rules, sanitation, and preventative practices. Medicine is mostly poison. Its effect is to shock the organs or brands, br glands to bring about reaction. Nature makes the cure. So he said back then, we're going to be doing more preventative practices 105 years ago. We're still not there. Next, chapter 15, how often we see the pill fiend in his vest pocket is a small apothecary, drugstore shop, collection of round pasteboard boxes. Every little while he dopes himself. If his stomach is on strike, he pops a pill. If his head aches, he takes a tablet. If he sneezes, he takes a cold cure pill. The pill leader is a hypochondriac, and very likely the doctor knows it. 105 years ago, they had the pill fiend like we have today. 105 years ago, we're going to go preventative practices. We're still not there. It's just we have a crisis in this country of chronic disease and drugs. People can do their own research. Half of the people between 60 and 75 males are on statins. The research out there, is the research do out there is they don't work. The research out there, just Google. If your doctor told you, and I'm not a doctor, get your own freaking um, uh, research but people think that high cholesterol causes heart disease. The research is now it doesn't. And they've changed those recommendations. What was high heart, what was high cholesterol has dropped and dropped and dropped for one reason. Your number is too high. We need to put you on a stat. One quick thing. I do need to, uh, you've given the caveat, but I do need to give the caveat to protect my ass. We're, yes, not, giving medic, we're not giving medical advice. Exactly. Here. I'm not so, doing your own research. Do it's your easy own to research. Find. Do your own research. What do you think of this idea? I think we not only have big pharma that's making us worse, but we have big agro and big food. Okay, that, here, here's, so big here's, food here's makes us you. sick, and then big pharma gives us stuff that makes us sicker. I agree. Two things. H how many countries in the world can you advertise pharmaceuticals on TV? You can't do it in Europe. How, you know how many countries in the whole world? I don't know. United States and New Zealand. That's it. That says something. I encourage everybody to watch a documentary called What the Health. If you Google What the Health Streaming, you'll find it. And you will see one of the scenes, the guy is uh, going into the president of the American Diabetes Association. Obviously, diet impacts type 2 diabetes, right? I mean, that's right. so obvious. And he's got the studies from the National Institute of Health going in to talk to the guy about the link between diet and type 2 diabetes. The guy goes, no, nope. interview over. Can't talk about that. The collusion between Big Pharma, American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, American Diabetes Association, and the American Chicken Council, Pork Council, Dairy Council, Egg Council to keep people eating. And the collusion with the FDA, with all the bullshit. Remember the food pyramid? They're a captive agency. They are what Robert F. Kennedy Jr., forget the rest of what he says, calls a captive agency. 100%. They, they've been captive captured by by the very people they're supposed to be regulating this is turning into a, this is a, let's well, keep it's, going it's a crisis in america the money i know to keep I know. people on a drug forever unbelievable that that's why ozempic that's why they're pushing it so hard it's an expensive drug they want to put you on forever yeah but it, ask if you're watching this everybody that's resonating mm -hmm. with you ask yourself how many advertisements do you see on tv for class action lawsuits, for drugs that were released, were supposed to be great, and now killed and maimed thousands of people, and there's a class action lawsuit. Ask yourself that. Here come the lawyers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. My, my whole my whole message is 
my brand's been about my website's get switched on.com. My whole message is about getting switched on. And what long-term sustained success looks like to me is you got to think long-term and take care of your number one asset, which is your health and vitality and your yep. energy and your ability to be disease and drug free. You got to think long-term with your habits. And it's those little disciplines you repeat day after day. Um, I don't think you have to work out like an Olympic champion, no. but you have to be consistent. You have no. to know going in every month what a workout means. And you got to say, hey, I'm going to do for me. It's been 18 days. I'll show you something, Paul. You'll like this. I love how animated you are. This is great. <laughs> so, for example, this what is a great a, guess. People can Google this. This is my motion is medicine energy schedule. And it just says at the top, I oh, must work a minimum of blank days. Then per month, there's 31 little days. And you put it on the mirror in your I bathroom and you fill in the box. I want okay. that. How do I get yeah, that? I'll get it to you. Well, what, we can put the link there on my website where people yeah, can download the link. it. We'll put the link. But it says goal and then it says actual. you got to fill it in the little boxes at the end of the month. What did you do? But my whole thing is that people underestimate the power of being consistent. The thousand events I've flown to, and one of the things I'm proudest of, I weigh the same as I did 30 years ago. And it's not because I work out so crazy. I'm just consistent. I have the little decisions. Like you said, the little decisions, eat the right things day after day leads to the next thing. People can change, but you've got to change like you talked about identity and belief. You know, the best time to work out everything, all the research says is in the morning. But people think, well, I'm just not a morning person. Never been a morning person. Well, shit, it starts with one. You can make a decision tomorrow and say, hey, I need to take better care of my number one asset, or as it says in the Bible, I believe, treat your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. You got to yeah. be thinking, hey, how am I treating my temple? Yep. And you've got to say, hey, I can power of one in a row. I can change from somebody who didn't work out in the morning to somebody who does. You don't have to be perfect. Well, let, let's say you go from zero to three days a week or four days a week. That's a big win. But it's just a matter of getting the momentum to start making one right choice. I agree. Um, you know, everybody probably seen, remember Admiral McRaven, the speech at uh, University of Texas, you know, that make one? your bed every morning. Is make that your bed. The guy? They teach the first thing in the morning, make your bed, but not just make your bed, make your bed perfectly. And that one, one right thing leads to the next right thing. It's I've the tried. power of consistency of those disciplines. Most people know. I love this guy. I mean, this, this, this book right here by James Clear has been the number one book in the world. Yeah. Nonfiction, yes. the last three years, yeah. nothing's even close. And it's about the power of habits. And I love what he says. That's I, I've done this for 29 years on the mirror in my bathroom. I and I, every presentation I do, I have somebody fill this I out. And I love what he says is every box you fill in is a vote for the person you want to be. That's so powerful. Think about that. Every time you track something and you fill in that box, I'm on track. It's a vote for the person you want to be. Dan. That's this how you change genius. your identity. My my friend Chase Hughes, who I don't think you've heard of Chase, but Chase says confidence is having a kick-ass reputation with the person who you're going to be tomorrow, which good. I good. Oh, I love really, that. Very good. Chase is a genius. One thing I, I will bring up is I've learned if you can't be consistent, be smart. Without my trainer, I would not be consistent. Without her cooking 100%. for me, I would eat shitty. I need to have, so if you can't be consistent and disciplined, hire the person who will make you that way. Well, I, I always tell people, if you want to get a jump start, because there, there's an article out there, everybody, you can read uh, Google called Change or Die. It was 2005 Fast Company. And it was basically said, uh, what if you were, it's a big letters. I could pull it out of here if I could, can't find it, but change or die. What if you were given that choice? What if you went to the doctor and the doctor says, you got to change or you're going to die. Could you change? Would you change? Here are the scientifically studied odds, Paul. It's nine to one against you from changing. And in a short nutshell, I'll make it as tight as I can, but really? they were looking at heart disease. And the common ad advice with heart disease is, my God, Paul, you just had a coronary bypass. Let's start with little steps, little baby steps. Let's start making little changes, little changes, little changes. And the person just had a coronary bypass, major, major difficult surgery to recover from. And so they make little, little changes, little, little changes, create little, little results. And so within 18 months, most people quit and go back to the lifestyle. Yep. Yep. But as you'll read in the article, the people who made radical changes, not baby steps, more radical changes in diet, exercise, lifestyle, hired the personal trainer, went green, started juicing. It worked. They got quicker results. Therefore, it motivated them to stick with that. 
so many people are afraid to make a bigger change. They're doing baby steps. That's why they've got to be able to hire people. Oh, it's expensive to hire a personal trainer. Well, how expensive is it to get really sick and stay sick? It's no. the best investment you can make to have because no. you don't know what you don't know and they can get I, you quicker results. I don't want my trainer to watch this. She'll double her rates. <laughs> but I want to, <laughs> I have this idea and I want to ask you about this. Super yeah. successful entrepreneurs, however you measure that, if you don't have your health, you're not successful. But let's say, as measured by their numbers, I think they're addicted to cortisol. Cortisol is, they're so runny on cortisol, they feel if they're not having cortisol, I'm sure they can't identify it as such, surging through their system, they think they're being lazy. Can you talk right. about cortisol? And, and, and I'm not an expert. I'll, I'll be admit, I'm not an expert enough there to to to, All to, right. to do it. No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Good enough. I respect that. Um, you, you, you've answered. You've answered almost all. I, I think pretty much all of these. Why do so many not focus on on living a healthy lifestyle and get off track? I think you've well, you answered. Know, it, it's fascinating because I try to talk about more about who you are than what you do. Companies have been hiring me for thirty years, primarily off. It's fun because I'm just redoing because, you know, this is a very demo video business, right? I'm just about 60% through my new demo video. And it's hard to capture what you do. People want energy. Well, they want interaction. And they're really not 100% sure on my message. And I come in and it's 90% about you. And it's so refreshing because they're all doing business, business, business. I remember I did a program. I'm not going to name the company here recently, but they were there and they're putting their plans together. They were measuring them in 13 areas they had to be accountable on. I'm like, Pick five that really matter. I mean, 13 is so many. Um, I think most people aren't looking long-term. What I try to get across to people is, and I've been saying this on stage forever, um, I'm going for 100, you know, because one of the things I learned from Tony is the vast majority of people are going to die of a preventable disease. Because yeah. if you're not taking great care of yourself right now, you're thinking, oh, I'll, I'll, you're only going to put that off so long without consequences. And I don't know your health challenges. Maybe this is going to echo what you're going to say. But what happens is you're going to feel a little off and you're going to go to the doctor. The doctor's going to run some tests and come back and, hey, I hate to say it, you got X. I wish we would have caught this earlier. Now you yeah. got major time, major money, major stress, reversing something you could have avoided. So when I talk about reaching 100, it's about your health span of how long you live. And let, let me give you a little visual here. I've been using this on stage. This has been pretty powerful for me. But um, this, this I, I, I don't have it printed up, but it's like one, one to 100, okay? From one to 100. And right now in America, did you know that the average life expectancy is 76 years old? Did you know that? No. Life expectancy has gone down three years in a row. Most people are going to die by 76. I'm doing the little things every day. And if you want to have fun, everybody, go out there. There's multiple life expectancy calculators you can find. You put in a bunch of parameters about your current lifestyle. It'll spit out how long you're going to live. If you want to subscribe to my list, uh, just text the word CHIP to 66866. CHIP to 66866. It'll say, what's your email address? Boom. It'll take you to a, a page of my website that'll help you with that. And most people are going to die at 76. So right now, I'm going to take off those 24 years. Are you with me, Paul? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm going to work hard because everybody, what, why are you doing what you're doing? One day you want to do what? You want to retire and really enjoy the rest of your life. You I never want to retire. Just Why, well, exactly. But you want, to, you want to, quote, get to a point where now you don't have the pressure of having to work all the time, let's yes. say. But yes. if you have three chronic diseases... What do those rest of those years look like? So now I'm left with a paper from one to 76. Are you with me? One yep. to 76. Yeah. I'm 63. I've only got that left. I This hits home for me every day. I'm 65. <laughs> 65. So you've got that left. Now I feel great. <laughs> well, here's the key. Son of a bitch. What, what, what are you going to do? to get those other 24 years. That's the question I try to help people do. And that's why I guess the last three, four years, I've pivoted more towards 
the wellness piece, uh, Lenar Homes, maybe the biggest home builder in the country, uh, 9,800 associates. I was speaking to division after division after division in 2018 or 2019. And then John Jaffe, the president said, hey, Chip, let's just put you on retainer for 2020. I'm like, fantastic. And so I'm speaking to all of their divisions, all their employees live. And then COVID hit. Thank God they let me pivot to a virtual delivery. So they kept paying me that. Yeah. And I helped them develop a 37 video series that was based on their key pain points because their healthcare costs are out of control. Hypertension, type two diabetes, cancer, bad backs, all that stuff. So that's been my focus here is having companies. I've been helping them up front with an awesome experience, but I'm like, Hey, what if there was a way for free when you book me for the live event, you get a proven video series. You can release a video every 10 days for the following year to engage those people in healthier habits. And I tell you, it's working like wildfire. Fantastic. Chip, we are pretty much at the end of this, but, but I Bonus know, time. Is, is that your book behind you on your right? Yeah. Is that your book? Guide to accomplish Show it. everyone this. Show everyone this. Well, it's, it's, it's a great book. Um, I wrote it with a guy. When you co-author a book, this was the last one I did, uh, co-author with somebody smarter than you. So Jeff Davidson and I did this book and it's just a manual. If you've got somebody in school or college, it's about every area of your life from financial to fun, to relationships, to business, to standing out, to being successful. It is a, not a theoretical book. It is an action Mark guide to please. accomplishing your goals. It's available on my website at get switched okay. cool. If anybody wants to get the free uh, PDF version of think it's fascinating to read what were people thinking 105 years ago? About I want that one. Uh, oh, it's brilliant. It's really. In fact, I would like, I wonder if I can get the hard copy. Of, uh, my if you look through, uh, and that's what it looks like. Think um, there, if you go through older, I think Albris, A-L-B-R-I-S is one. I've heard of it. There's some uh, older books you can find. You can probably pick it up for not very much, but I got, oh, my grandmother was a big personal development person. When she passed away, I got some of her libraries. I got some of these old classic books. Chip, this has hit home for me because I have my own health challenges and uh, my mother died of liver cancer. My brother is tort and tortured, dying incredibly slowly. He told me every day is torture with leukemia Oh God. Uh, and the chemotherapy destroyed him, just oh. absolutely destroyed him. I don't want to get into detail. My, my dad died of lung cancer. He was 6'6", 230. And you know, I'm like, I tried to... Get him to my sister, my I oldest sister died of lung cancer. She never smoked a day in her life. Uh, my father had three triple bypasses. Uh, he, he had him at a teaching hospital. My brothers and I used to joke by the third one, the students were probably all gathered around going, how the hell are we going to repair this one? Uh, I had uh, angioplasty 15 years ago, wow. uh, which is way too early, but Chip, let's talk off the air because we have yeah, some I'd love to discuss. Uh, once again, if people want to stay in the conversation with you, they should text the word CHIP to 66866. That way you can join my list. If you have a, a part of a company and most of the speakers suck, uh, send them my website at GetSwitched.com. Because I'll be honest, a lot of a lot of conventions suck. They last Oh, energy. they suck they donkey dick. Great. There's no... Uh, uh, energy and engagement and there's just somebody up there blah 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 blah. so if you want something different you can contact me but I'll, I'll just leave it here with people um it's not an accident you were watching paul and i today there's probably something into your life you need to probably step up and make a decision about i encourage you to make that decision what do you need to start doing what do you need to stop doing what is something you're going to say hey, right now i want to achieve this result this is what i'm willing to do every day track it start filling in those little boxes um, download, there's a uh, motion is medicine schedule. Can we put a PDF near the, uh, of course, okay. we'll put there's another one. We'll I didn't get a chance to links. talk about it. I've got a smoothie recipe called the get switched on smoothie recipe is a very low sugar, high green smoothie to change your immune system, build your energy level. Thousands of people drink that every day. And it's amazingly easy to make and change your life. But the challenge is it's really easy to not download the smoothie recipe and not make it. That's the problem. No, no. As you find yourself naturally, easily, quickly, and joyously downloading that and in whatever surprising ways following what it says, 
I don't know all the ways you'll feel so grateful to continue to stay in touch with Chip, but as you're recognizing my NLP skills, I want to thank you for being on the show, but stay on because I have some things. Yes, sir. Fantastic. You. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right. We'll see you again on the Influencer's Edge. Thanks a lot. The Influencer's Edge is brought to you by the Rapid Sales Accelerator. If you're ready to skyrocket your sales by 30% or more in just 90 days, then you need to claim your free training right now. You'll learn four words that will compel your prospects to trust you like they were children within the first three to five minutes of any conversation across any platform and any medium. You'll learn how to give your prospects objection amnesia to crush objections like I need to talk to my spouse or I need more time to think it over or it's too expensive. And finally, you'll get a free recorded audio training that will install unbelievable attitudes for success and wipe out any limiting beliefs. So if you'd like to claim your free training now, go to www.paulrossbook.com. Do it before your competition does it now. Thank you for tuning in to the Influencer's Edge, where you get the latest breakthroughs, cutting edge insights, tools, and techniques so you can leapfrog over the pack of sales, influence, and persuasion. Remember to visit our website at www.theinfluencersedge.com to enjoy even more great episodes like this one. We look forward to seeing you again on the Influencer's Edge Show.